This video is sponsored by Regin Dojo, which offers training courses for Regin and technical art from veterans of the industry. Head over to Regin Dojo to find more about it. All right, guys, so welcome back to this new tutorial. And today we are talking about big fields, all right? And most of all, like how I was used to do them and how I do them now because I found a better way to do it. All right, actually learn a feature of C++ that I didn't know about. All right, so in case you don't know what bit fields are, I'm going to give you a quick example. So let's say you have a character in your game. All right, so this character is tracking a lot of state. Uh, without even getting into the fight, okay, that's good, that's bad, but let's say your character is tracking state, like he's jumping, he's shooting, he's bleeding, he's in contact with the ground, um, all these kind of things, all right? And you declare them as a bool, all right? Because it's either true or false. Bulls make, make perfect sense. But the size of a bool is not one bit, it's one byte, all right? So let's say you have 12 bulls, uh, you're de declaring 12 bits, uh, bytes, when you can declare that as a 12 bits. But the bool is a bigger size because you cannot address anything smaller uh, than a byte. So that's where bit fields come into play, uh, where you just use a single bit to declare your value. It comes with a bit of a little bit more work, but it's worth it. Another pro of the bit fields, other than space, is that um, let's say you make library, right? And inside your class, you have a bit field. Most likely in the bit field, you have empty space that you're not using. So in the future, if you need to do to add another space, sorry, another flag in your character, another state, uh, you can do that without increasing the size of the struct of the class, all right? So you don't break ABI compatibility uh, if you're doing a library, right? Which is my be something you care about. So in the past, the way I would do that is I will declare my strongly typed enum, right? I will declare all my values uh, as a power of two, all right? And the reason why is a power of two is because the actual power uh, of two define the bit that is going to be set to one. All right, so for example, if I set 1, only the first bit is going to be set. If I set 1, only um, the second bit is going to be set, because it's 2 to the 1, and, and so on. 4 is the third bit, uh, 8, oops, 8 is the fourth bit, and so on. 16, 32, so that's how you do it, all right? Then you will have a function that is going to manipulate those bits for you. So you pass in all your values, which are all your flags, all the state of your character. You pass the enum you actually want to set, right? So for example, jumping, and whether you want to set or unset that bit, all right? So you convert your, uh, your flag to an actual int uh, because it's strongly typed, and then you do some bit magic. All right, so if you're not familiar with bit manipulation, when you do an end, you are set, uh, unsetting a value, all right? Because usually you do an end with a zero. So if, you, if you, your value is one, and you do an end with a one, you still get one, so nothing change, all right? But if you have a one and you do an end with a zero, the result is zero. So your bit got unset. Instead, on the opposite, if you do a or, right? Oops. If I can, here we go. If you do a or, uh, one or zero is still one, and uh, one or one is still a one, right? So usually you use or to set. So what's happening here is really simple, right? You compute both values. The value. Um, uh, there are actually sorry two ways to do it. Uh, one way is compute both values, one set or not, and then pick the one you want based on the flag, the shoe set, or in this case, what I do is, I always unset the values, all right? 
and then I try to set the value. If um, if I don't want to set the value, so this is, should set is a zero, my actual flag becomes all zeros. So I'm ordering with nothing. So nothing gets set, the result is my value got unset. If in, instead this value is on, the value gets set back in. So if it wasn't set, it gets set. If it was already set, it stayed set. All right, so that's how it works. And you see, it's a little bit more work. Uh, you need an extra enum and so on. Instead, there is a better way to do that, and is using struct. So I found that recently that basically a struct you can define the size that you want to use for your type. All right. So in this case, you can actually say, all right, it's a bool. All right, I'm gonna deal with that as it's a bool, but it's only one bit all right it's only one bit of size so basically here i'm declaring a struct which should contain only six bits all right then the uh, if i only had the struct it was probably going to be one byte because it's gonna uh compound that uh pad that to eight bit boundary at least all right Instead, I'm also doing a union, all right, called all flags. So I can set all the flag at once. And we are going to see that now what I mean by that, all right? Next, I will have my function to set the values, all right? But I can set them directly, all right? Like if it was a regular struct. So I'm setting the value one, which is a bool for A and for E, and it works really well. All right, and same for B, or I can set that for all flags because I use the union here. All right, so the struct is an anonymous struct, and then I have the union for a 32 bit, so the whole thing is 32 bit uh, size. So I can set all flags equal to value 2. Oops. So I can set that as an int, or I can set it like to whatever value I want, right? The magic combination of flags I want, which that might be good for initialization, right? Because maybe the character starts standing, but in contact with the ground. And so I can figure out what's the actual decimal value for that, and set it all the flag at once. Or for example, I can clear all of them at once, all right? This is going to nuke all of them. And if we have a look, all right, um, if we have a look at what we are doing here, all right, so the actual generated code is really, really smart code. So overall, the code generated is similar to our function. It's actually slightly shorter, but is actually able to set multiple flags at once, all right, because you see here we have our coded constants. So let's have a look what is actually doing there. So we are setting A and E, all right? So A is 0 and E is 5. So if we go and check what value is actually minus 18, all right? So I hope you know choose complements, but basically, as you can see, is going to unset right he's using this mask to unset the bit 0 and 5 all at once all right so we are actually saving code here because we are saving instruction because in order to set to flag we will have to call this function twice maybe with if it's in line whole program optimization this kind of stuff maybe is able to combine but i would not be so sure about it but here we are doing it explicitly he knows exactly which value we are setting, so he's nuking that. All right, so he's, he's making the mask as a constant, directly in code. We are saving instruction is going to be uh, quicker to execute. And actually, meanwhile, I was typing here, I just noticed that. So, for example, if we set all flags, for example, here to zero, the compiler is smart enough to see, oh, you're setting all flag to zero, so this value, b, is going to be nuked either way, doesn't matter, I'm go not going to do it. And you see that it's going to set zero and get out, all right? So, 
I do find um, this way cleaner, so using the structs, uh, because it, it's like working with the structs. You set the values directly, and the compiler is going to generate the actual code you need to manipulate those bits at once, and is also able to do different optimization if you're setting multiple values at once. All right, so that's really useful. So um, that's it uh, for today. That's what I wanted to share with you. Uh, I find that's really useful. I'm going to replace with this, for example, in my game engine when I was doing bit field manipulation. And that's it, guys. So see ya in the next tutorial.